we're going to start with a vector A and a vector B. Now, if we join up the end of A to the end of B, this vector here would be the vector from sort of position A to position B. And we know that this vector here is the same as minus A plus B, or rather B minus A. Okay, so this is the vector B minus A. We've got the red vector A, we've got the blue vector B, and I'm going to put an angle here, theta. And I'm going to write down the cosine rule. Cosine rule says that the length of B minus A, that length, which we use this notation, squared, that means the length, that black line, equals the red length squared plus the blue length squared minus 2 times the red length times the blue length times the cosine of the angle between them. So it's just the normal cosine rule. Now, what do any of these bits mean? Well, in particular, I'm going to look at this left-hand side. If A, if the vector A has got two parts to it, an uh, uh, I part, that's how far across, and a J part, that's how far up. Remember, this is the unit vector I, and this is the unit vector J, and they describe how far across and how far up a vector is going. So A would be 3I and 5j or something like that, whereas b would be like 6i and 2j. So I'm going to use the letters a1 and a2 to describe how far across and how far up a goes, and I'm going to use b1 to describe how far across b goes, and b2 to describe how far up b goes. So this is this distance here is b1, this is b2, this is a1, this is a2. Now, what would happen if I did B minus A? Well, how many I's would I have? And how many J's would I have? I'd have uh, B1 minus A1, lots of I, and B2 minus A2, lots of J. So that's saying that this vector here, B minus A, that the amount across is B1 minus A1, and the amount down is B2 minus A2, because, of course, B2, this bit, is smaller than A2, this bit. So this is negative, B2 minus A2, which is why we're going down. OK, so what would the length of that vector be? B minus A, the length, would be the, uh, well, we just use Pythagoras. We go this squared plus this squared, square rooted, would be that length. So that length would be B1 minus A1 squared, plus b2 minus a2 squared, and then we would square root the whole thing. So if we want b minus a squared, which is the left-hand side of the cosine rule, that's going to equal b1 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus a2 squared, but then not square rooted because of the squared. And this is going to equal, well, we've got the length of a, which is a1 squared plus a2 squared, but then not square rooted, because of the squared there. Then we've got the length of b, which is equal to b1 squared plus b2 squared, and then not square rooted, because of the squared. And then minus 2, and then we've got length of a and length of b, which I'll just leave like that for a minute, cosine theta. OK, let's expand out the left-hand side. b1 squared minus 2a1b1 plus a1 squared plus b2 squared minus 2a2b2, oops, uh, didn't write that very well, 2a2b2 plus a2 squared. And then what that equals is a1 squared plus b, uh, sorry, a1 squared plus a2 squared plus b1 squared plus b2 squared minus 2 times the length of a times the length of b times cosine theta. Okay. Well, we've got cancelling here. Well, we've got, on the left-hand side, we've got a b1 squared. And on the right-hand side, we've got a b1 squared. They cancel. Then we've got an a1 squared cancelling with an a1 squared. And we've got b2 squared cancelling with a b2 squared. And we've got an a2 squared cancelling with an a2 squared. So this is tidying up nicely. We get minus 2 as a common factor. a1b1 plus a2b2 equals minus 2 mod a mod b cosine theta. 
dividing through by minus 2, a1b1 plus a2b2 is mod a mod b cosine theta. So it's just all this formula is, a1b1 plus a2b2 is mod a mod b cos theta, is the cosine rule. And I'm going to write it out again. I'm going to change the colours so that you can see where the a's and the b's are. So what we've actually got here is we've got a1 multiplied by b1 plus, and then we've got a2, that's the j component of a, multiplied by b2, and that's equal to mod a, that's the length of a, mod b cosine theta. So that is our really important formula, and the left-hand side is what we call this thing here, that's what we call a dot b. So what's actually going on here is on the left-hand side of our equation a dot b, that's a1 and b1, which is a1 is this distance across here, how much x there is in a, b1 is how much x there is in b, so we're timesing them together, and then we're adding on the j component of a, that height there, multiplied by the j component of b, that height there. So it's really easy to do in practice if you use column notation. So say we've got the vector a is 1, i and 4j, and we're dotting that with the vector b, which is 6i and 2j, what we do is we multiply the a1 by the b1, this is the a1 here, this is the a2 here, this is the b1 here, this is the b2 here, so we multiply the a1 by the b1, we multiply the a2 by the b2, and we add it up. 1 times 6 plus 4 times 2 equals 14, really easy. What about the other side of the equation, the right hand side? Well, the length of A, that's this length here, that's the amount of I squared plus the amount of J squared, square rooted. So that would be, uh, in this case, 1 squared plus 4 squared, square rooted. Root 17, um, length of B. Length of B, well that would be um, this distance here, 6 squared plus this distance here, 2 squared, square rooted. So that gives us uh, 6 squared plus 2 squared square rooted, which is root 40. So putting all these ingredients together into the formula, what do we get? Well, the formula from the cosine rule tells us that a dot b, which we know is 14, is equal to the length of a, which is root 17, times the length of b, which is root 40, times the cosine of the angle between them. That's the angle there. And obviously rearranging that would be a handy way for me to find out what that angle was. And then I could just inverse cosine this. And ta -da! we get theta. So this is one of the biggest uses for the dot product um, is to find the angle between two vectors. What's important is that the A vector is going from here out like that in that direction outwards and the b vector is going out from the same point in that direction so you have to be really careful really the hardest bit is setting up what is a and what is b and then what you'll get is this nice angle between them here theta by rearranging the formula the way we sometimes think about the dot product is that it's a measure of the extent to which a and b are like each other and, and to what extent do they go in the same direction because going in the same direction would mean theta was zero. And as you increase your theta round from a little to bigger to bigger, what you're doing is you're check you're decreasing the extent to which A is like B, the extent to which A is going in the same direction as B. Here, A is going in the complete opposite direction to B. Completely the opposite direction. That's at 90 degrees. So if that's actually 90 degrees, this isn't roughly zero. This is zero. And that's really important and useful fact that we can use very helpful that one if we keep going we increase it even more we now go negative because a is going in a backwards direction to b like that so another way that we can think about the dot product is the extent to which a and b are going in the same direction and how do i know all this well just by looking at the graph of cosine mod a mod b cosine theta that's a dot b and graph of cosine looks like this 
So if we've got a small alpha, like a uh, small theta, small angle, then cosine will be nearly one. This will be nearly one. So a dot b will be roughly mod a mod b. If I go across, 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 when I get to 90 degrees here, that's where cosine theta is naught. So this will be naught. So this whole right hand side will be naught. So a dot b will be naught. And then as I keep going, making this angle bigger and bigger and bigger here, going across like that, then the all of these dot products will be will be negative because cos theta will be negative. And finally, there's one more way that we can think about the dot product. It really is quite a brilliant way of multiplying two vectors together. If you divide both sides of the equation by mod b, then it says that a dot b over mod b, the length of b is mod a cos theta. But this mod a cos theta means something. If we create this right angle triangle here, if we look, the way of thinking about it is a shadow. If this is the sun here, shining down, that's the sun, and it's creating, it's coming down directly onto B and creating this shadow that A is pushing onto B. Now, the length of this red vector is A, the angle is theta, and therefore the shadow is of length mod A cos theta. And this is called the projection of A onto B. It's the extent to which A is going in the same direction as B. It's the shadow that A makes on B. So if they're perpendicular, like this, and the sun shines down, straight down onto B, there will be no shadow at all of A on B because A is going in a completely opposite direction. So what do you actually need to know? Well, very little, to be honest. You need to know the formula A dot B equals mod A mod b cos theta. You need to know that a dot b is calculated by doing a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2, which is easiest in vector notation because if you're doing a dot b in vectors then you'd have a1 here and a2 here and b1 here and b2 here so you'd just be doing these two multiplied plus these two multiplied. Obviously length of a you already know, you knew it from school. a1 squared plus a2 squared square rooted. Pythagoras. Length of b is uh, b1 squared plus b2 squared square rooted. And you can extend this to three dimensions as well really easily. You can do, if you're in three dimensions, then the dot product will be this times this plus the middle one times the middle one plus the z1 times the z1. And Pythagoras will be that squared plus that squared plus that squared square rooted. That's similarly for that. And then we get the angle at the end. Now if you put all these ingredients in and divide, you could get the angle or you could find some other missing value. The way to actually think about what it is, is that it's a measure of the extent to which A is like B. And it gives you an idea of the projection of A onto B. And therefore, very important fact, a dot b is naught means that a is perpendicular to b and a perpendicular to b means that a dot b is naught.